Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem Rechakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to all you Akim out there pushing his word with all truth and sincerity, and to all you believers out there who believe in on the gospel. Hey, and it's the brother Kwa Rabad from the GMS Houston camp. And uh, I just want to touch on a lesson, man. Um, you know, Lord willing to be edifying, but um, as you see from the current events, you know, that's still going on. You know, more people with uh, without power, um, people, you know, having to dwell in the freezing cold weather, whether you in the house or out of the house. You know, a lot of people don't have food to hold them over. You see, shelter, so on and so forth. Well, look, as believers of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, we shouldn't be in the same mindset uh, as these people in the world, man. We should be looking for the, the 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 miracles of the Lord, man. We should be looking for the Lord to make ways for us. Why? Because He said so. He said when these times come, and again, this is this is just the beginning. <laughs> you see, this is just the beginning. You know, like the brothers been talking about in the chat, uh, in the chat, the group chat out out here in Houston. You know, just just a, a trial run, man. It's prelims to what's really gonna be in Jacob's trouble. You know, and the Lord allowing us to go through these things to build us up, you know, for uh, for certain uh, situations we might have to face um, in the time of trouble, man. You know, but in these times, we shouldn't, you know, uh, be bugging out like certain people in this world who don't have the Lord, man. No, remember, when times like this come, that's when the Lord make that separation on who is his. That's when he make that separation on who is his. That's when this world going to realize the benefits of serving the Lord, man, as I mentioned on my last lesson, you see, you know, hey, that's also uh, like a brother, the brother Isaiah Wise, he had mentioned last night how uh, you have five uh, Ishikarite women um, running up to him, begging him, you know, begging him to come uh, turn off their water uh, at their house because their pipes burst, you know, so on and so forth, and they couldn't get it to turn off. And that brother mentioned how, hey, that's the beginning of Isaiah 4 and 1, how seven women go take hold of one man. They go be looking for help, man. Why? Hey, and then it just had so happened. It was that brother. They gonna see the power in us, man. And it's not it's not us, but the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. You know, even sisters too, the Lord gonna make ways for who is his. You know, so I just want to touch on a couple of scriptures like that. You know, why um, you know, why our confidence should be in these times, man. You know, the Lord promised it to it. Like he said, hey, my servants shall eat, but they shall be hungry, man. You know, my servants shall drink, but they shall be thirsty, you see? You know, hey, and another thing, um, before I get the scripture, just to add, and what the Lord do for us don't always have to be physical, man, as far as him actually giving you food in the famine, drinking the famine, you know what I mean? Actually delivering you from enemies. It don't always have to be physical, the works of the Lord. It could be the spirit that he put on us to get through these times, man, because again, everybody ain't going to have his spirit. You see, everybody ain't going to have a spirit. Perfect example. Remember when we went to um uh check out the land of Israel in the time of uh Joshua and Caleb, you had a lot of them came back with a scary report. They were scared, they didn't have faith, you see. But Joshua and Caleb, the scripture said they had another spirit, man. Another spirit. And when you read about the mindset they had, they was bold, they was confident in Yahweh by Shimi Shai. They fully trusted in the Lord, man. You see? Well, look, that's another thing, man. That's another way the Lord can work for us. Again, it don't always have to be physical. It can be the spirit he put on us to endure cold weather, to endure a famine. You know what I mean? Whatever it be, man. You know, let me get this real quick. Second, that's just two. And this, this ain't nothing new. This ain't nothing new, man. This happened hey, throughout the scriptures, all the way even going back to Egypt. When the Lord brought them plagues to the Egyptians, he separated the plagues that happened to the Egyptians, that didn't happen to Israel, man. You know, we, we might have to get that, you know. And not a day is the Israel the most high, the elect, you know. Those plagues that's going to hit this new Egypt, Babylon the Great. Like it said in Job, and uh, the Lord going to save his out of those six troubles and that seventh trouble, man, which is those missiles, you know. But uh, let me snag this real quick and Lord willing this lesson be edifying this second measure two, and I'm going to start at 24. Right, it says, Abide still, O my people, and take thy rest, for thy quietness shall come. Right, we already know we pilgrims, huh? We ain't gonna be here forever, you know. 
Like it says, um, we seeking for that kingdom to come. Well, look, the Lord said, look, it's coming, man. Right? And we sh our spirit should be rested. Like it's uh, what that is, um, Corinthians. I believe uh, 2 Corinthians 4, around 16. If I'm not mistaken, it says, though our outward man perish, yet our inward man is renewed day by day. Right now, hey, our outward man is perishing. Brothers cold, you know, maybe have a lack of food, lack of water right now, you know, until the Lord, you know, make a move, you know, uh, but our outward man is perishing. But our spirits is growing stronger as the days goes by. And look, these other people, they perishing, but they spirit perishing right along with them. You see, so it says, nourish thy children, O thou good nurse, and establish their feet. As for the servants whom I have given thee, there shall not one of them perish. For I will require them from among thy number. It says, be not weary, for when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others shall weep and be sorrowful, but thou shall be merry and have abundance, man. <laughs> you see that? But we shall be merry and have abundance, man. Right? And that could come in a hey, many ways than one. The Lord can allow us to have abundance many ways than one. You see, whether he actually, you know, do a miracle for you or he have other people help you out. That's another thing. If somebody come help you, offer you food, you just can't say, nah, I'm going to wait on the Lord to come bless me. <laughs> hey, it's like that story on, um, I forget uh, exactly how I go, but it's a story of a man who was drowning, right? You can look it up. A man who was drowning and he believed in God. You see, so uh, he was drowning and uh, you had a dude on a canoe come. Say, hey, come on, man. Look, I'm going to help you out that water. Get out that water. You see, he said, nah, I'm good. You can go ahead. I believe in God. God going to save me. Right? So, boom, another a boat come now. A boat come. Hey, look. Come on, man. Let's, let's save you out that water. Nah, I'm good. God going to save me. I believe in God. He going to work a miracle for me. Then another dude came on the jet ski. Man, come on. You about to drown and die. Get out that water. He said, I'm good. God go come and save me. Well, look, check this out. The man drowned and died, right? And it's a story, you know. But the man drowned and died. And when he went up to heaven, he asked God, God, why you ain't saved me? I believed in you. <laughs> and the most high told him, well, shit, I sent you a, a dude on a canoe to save you out. I sent you a boat and a dude on a jet ski. You ain't take heed to the miracles. You missed out on your blessings, man. <laughs> you see? But again, it could come in many ways than one. We just got to aid, you know. Realize it, man. But uh, let's get it. it. Says, "Be not weary, for when the day of trouble and heaven is coming, others shall weep and be sorrowful, but thou shall be merry and have abundance." It says, "The heathen shall envy thee, but they shall not be able to do nothing against thee, save the Lord, man." You know. Matter of fact, let's let's get that Genesis right now. Cause look, I mean, uh, Exodus. When you go into the, the time of um, when those plagues was hitting Egypt. Right, they wasn't hitting the Israelites, man. You see, and Pharaoh was pissed off. He was like, "Man, why this happening to us, but not them?" But look, he still couldn't do nothing about it. You know, still can't do nothing about it, man. Right, but uh, let me get this. Hey, just mommy, you know how I say um, how neighbors go turn on each other for lack of food, lack of bread. Well, look, you might have abundance in your house. You might have a couple of things to to hold you over for the next couple of days, while other people running in people's houses, busting it up. The log how you. Good, you and your household good, man. You see? But um, let me see what it said in Exodus. Uh let me see. Um, because it was a couple. Alright, here it is. I get this one. This is Exodus 8. And let me see. I'm gonna start at 20. It says, And Yahweh said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. Right, lo, he cometh forth to the water and say unto him, Thus saith Yahweh, let my people go that they may serve me. Else, if thou wilt not let my people go, behold, I will send swarm of flies upon thee and upon thy servants and upon thy people and into thy houses. And the houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies and also the ground where they are. Now, people say, Well, it was just flies, but think about it you had one fly <laughs> flying around your head. Especially when you're trying to eat, that's pissing you off. How much more would it be? Um, uh, how much more would it piss you off if it's swarms of flies? Not just one. You can't even talk. As soon as you talk, they're going in your mouth and eyes everywhere. But it was it's happening to the it's gonna happen to the Egyptians, right? Let's read on. It says, and I will sever, which is separate, and I will sever in that day the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell. 
that no swarms of flies shall be there to the end that thou mayest know that I am Yahweh in the midst of the earth. You see, and it says, and I will put a division between my people and thy people tomorrow shall be this sign. Right. But you see, it came to pass. It happened. Let's go. Let's jump down. Let's see if we can get another one, man. How the Most High made a difference. He separated his people, right, whom he protected from the other people who had to go through those plagues, man. Now, again, we going to go through them, but ways going to be made for us, Lord willing, you see. You know, the Lord, hey, the Lord told us, look, if we do his work, right, if we honor him, worship him and Yahweh Shai, right, keep the laws to the best of our ability, so on and so forth, charity, he going to take care of take, take care of us when all hell break loose, right? You see? But, um, let me, let me get this. This is uh, Exodus 9, and I'm going to start at... One, it says, Then Yahweh said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh and tell him, Thus said Yahweh, power of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For if thou refuse to let them go, and will hold them still, behold, the hand of Yahweh is upon thy cattle, which is in the field, and upon the horses, and upon the asses, and upon the camels, and upon the oxen, and upon the sheep, there shall be a very grievous moraine, man. And you know, back in the day, a cattle... That was your money. That was your way to eat. So the Lord, hey, Moses tell him, look, the Lord going to hit you financially and uh, hit your food, man. If you don't let the Israelites go. It says in Yahweh, verse four, and Yahweh shall sever, which is what separate. And Yahweh shall sever between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt. And there shall nothing die of all that is of the children of Israel, man. <laughs> you see? And it says uh, in Yahweh. Appointed to set a time saying tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing in the land and the Lord did that thing on the morrow and all the cattle of Egypt died but of the cattle of the children of Israel did not one die and Pharaoh sent and behold there was none of the cattle of the Israelites dead and the heart of Pharaoh was hardened <laughs> and he did not let the people go. You see, so look, that's going back to that second address too. The heathen show envy thee, but they shall not be able to do nothing against thee. Pharaoh seen it and pissed them off, but he couldn't stop it. He couldn't stop it, man. Right? So, hey, we have to hope and pray that we are, uh, we are of that elk, right? That that precious elk, like the brother, um, our rum, you know, in uh, Birmingham camp, like to say, man, that precious elk, man, the elect. Because no matter what, if you are the elect, you're going to get protected, man. The Lord gonna make, let's get that in a second edges we'll end it. The Lord gonna make sure it's known who are his, man. Right? Hey, how you think them, them women go know to take hold to one man or certain men? Cause it's gonna be shown that they have hope and that they everybody doing a famine. Gonna be looking malnourished. You see? But you're gonna have brothers and sisters looking healthy, right? Or whatever it may be, man. Everybody got clothes dirty and all that. You might have a brother with a fresh fit. <laughs> you feel me? A fresh fit. But let me get this. This is second Ezra. Um, uh, let's see, sixteen, and I'll just start at seven. It says, "For there shall be in every place and in the next city a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord." Talking about with a so-called white man coming like a flood when he come after the Israelites, man. And we fast approaching that time. It says, they shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. It says, then, right? So when a when so-called white man make his move, it says, then shall they be known who are my chosen. Why? Because the Lord go lift up a standard, man. He going to make that separation in that day from his chosen between everybody else, man, and his chosen, man. You know, and it says, and they shall be tried as gold in a fire. Hear, O ye, my beloved. And now, this is why our hope lies in all this. Hear, O ye, my beloved, the house of David. It says, save the Lord. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for the Most High is your guide, man. You see, God as in G-U-I-D-E, the Lord going to lead us and direct our paths in that day, man. You see, the Lord going to lead and direct our paths, man. Right. But it says, be ye not afraid, neither doubt. So don't doubt. That's another thing. Hey, you may be waiting on the Lord to, to help you out of a situation. It might take longer than you thought. Still don't doubt. Don't doubt. Like, damn, it's the Lord now. Am I the elect? Is the Lord dealing, man? Continue to believe, man. 
Speaking of myself, first and foremost, hey, that doubt could creep in. That's why we have to have that whole armor, right? We can block all of them, you know what I mean? Straight up. So it says, don't doubt. Fully trust in the Lord, man. And again, I'm speaking to myself first and foremost. It says, because it's, it's easier said than done. It's, you feel me? It's a different story when you're going through something than when you're just talking about it. You feel me? But it says, be not afraid, neither doubt for the most high is your God. You know, and that's another thing before our hell break loose. The Lord is giving us a little training session right now to apply our faith. Apply it. You know, when we get in them times where they ain't just doing it, speaking on video, I'm going to put you in this situation. Let me see how you react. Well, this is that time we, we going through that practice period for the, the big show, man. Right. It says, and the God of them. Right. And a guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts of your high power. Let not your sins weigh you down and let not your iniquities lift up themselves, man. You see. But, you know, I just want to go uh, go into that real quick. The law going to make a separation, man. You know, the law going to make when them plays hit, the law going to make a separation on who are his. You see, but Lord willing, this lesson was that I found. I want to give all praise on and glory unto Yahweh. By Hashem Yahweh Shah, by Hashem Chakwadash, double honors to the apostles. And elders a great millstone and peace and blessings to all you out there pushing this word with all truth and sincerity. And to all you believers out there who believe in the gospel, man. Hey, with that, keep fighting, keep pushing. Shalom.